Two months ago, Combate Americas awarded the Copa Combate in Fresno. Now in 2019, we are back. The Save Mart Center as once again Combate Americas is front and center in a big fighting town with a little NorCal, SoCal, and Fresno certainly knows how to fight. Glad you could join us alongside the Venezuelan vixen Juliana Peña. I am Max Brados, and certainly there's a big lot of good fights here, including our main event. It is Mexico versus the U.S. It is the rooster versus the shark. It is Anthony Avila versus Pablo Sabori. And for Anthony Avila, he says he's coming off the best year of his life in 2018. He hopes 2019 can be much the same. Anthony Avila is a longtime vet in California. He trains with the toughest team around, Team Alpha Male. Look for this guy to be pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. He's going to bait Pablo Sabori. And you got to watch out for that neck because those guys at Team Alpha Male, they are great on the guillotine. And once they get a hold of that neck, it's over. From Sacktown and a big opportunity to set the table for Avila in 2019 to go even bigger and better. But first things first, he has to get by the rooster. Last time we saw him was Fresno. He was victorious. His defeats, though, he loses to the best in the business. Best in the business. Guys like Levy Marroquin and Alejandro Flores, who fought for the Copa Combate. So these guys are no slouches. Pablo Savori took this fight the second that we called him up. He was wanting to avenge the loss for his teammate, and when he gains confidence, he's a dangerous, dangerous fighter. Look for him to pressure and look for the knockout. And that is it. And Pablo Sabori with a huge opportunity to certainly set things up for the rest of the year if he can get by the shark tonight. The co-main event, and this is a fight a lot of people are talking about, one of the big names in women's MMA, Zoila Frausto, she said she had to get away from MMA. She was still in combat sports, in Muay Thai and kickboxing, winning everything in sight. Now she's back, and she wants to make it worth her while and fall in love once again. Yeah, Zoila Frausto obviously left for about three years. She went to her main love, kickboxing, but she is back here tonight. And again, she jumped at the opportunity for this fight because her little sister took a loss to her opponent, and she wants to get in there and avenge the loss for her little sister. And she's a vet. She's been in the game for 10 years or more. I remember her being a fighter when I first started and uh, contacting her way back in the day to try to get some tips and stuff. So. Yeah. Zoila Frosto is definitely dangerous. And it's all about opportunity. And there's nothing bigger in an opportunity to beat a big name. And Jamie Nevada has that opportunity if she can beat the Warrior Princess tonight. Jamie Nevada is dangerous. She's going to come out slugging. And I know that she was uh, having some troubles in the fight with uh, Zoila's little sister before. But now she's got everything on point And she says, I don't care what your name is. I'm going to walk right through you. And I'm going to get that win. And I'm going to get my hand raised tonight. She, she beat little sister before. This time it's big sister in Frausto and everyone's certainly talking about Zoila Frausto and we're going to be getting to that very shortly but let's get this card underway and it begins with Marcus Gaines and Ozzy Alvarez. I fought for so long you know using my veteran skills using my reach and my speed you know I think I have a big advantage because he's a shorter guy so sticking that jab in his face is, is going to do some good. You know, athleticism is going to play a part in it. Um, I know he's fit, um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I have confidence in my, uh, my abilities, and I think that's going to play a big uh, part in the outcome of this fight, confidence. Uh, he, you know, I don't know him, um, but he looks ready. He looks like a stud. He looks like he's ready to go. So, you know, it's going to be something great. He's tall. Um, he's, uh, I know his background. He's an experienced fighter. Um, it'll be an exciting fight. We're both taking it on short notice. And, uh, yeah, just ready to cowboy up and scrap. Live from the Safe Mart Center, esto es Combate Americas. Mexico versus USA. <laughs> Fresno, California. Lupe, it's time to get ruthless. Introducing first in the blue corner from with a record, a professional record of 15 wins, 29 losses, and one draw. Con el record de 15 victorias, 29 derrotas, y un empate. His official weight, 183.4 pounds. Con un peso oficial de 183.4 libras. Wearing the black trunks, con los calzoncillos negros, de Sacramento, California. Please welcome Marcus Gaines. And now, his opponent in the red corner, 
with a record of eight wins, five losses, and zero draws. His official weight was 185 and three quarters. We're in the blue trunks, con los calzoncillos azules, from Sacramento, California. Please welcome Ozzy the Outlaw Alvarez. <laughs> Referee in charge, Mark Lawley. All right, fighters, we've gone over the rules of the back. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. Touch gloves and let's have a good, clean fight. A good, clean fight. And Julian, as we look at the uh, tail of the tape, it is a three-inch height advantage for Gaines and a seven-inch reach edge. And we're fighting there at 185, the middleweight division. Juliana, you said expect fireworks in the first round. Guys who've taken this fight on short notice. We expect, would you expect a very active first round? And uh, these guys don't want to see round two. I mean, with as many fights as Marcus Gaines has, you got to think that he's just ready to go in there and handle business. It is Gaines in the black shorts. Applying the early pressure, taking the center of La Jaula. And Alvarez off to a flying start in that Last time we saw him back in September. Gain stalking, pumping up that jab, trying to get Alvarez to bite. Coming down low, Alvarez going for that body shot, changing the levels as his gains. Who hits him with draws. Nice teep kick from Alvarez. Alvarez the southpaw, goes for the single leg. Goes for the single, trying to pull that single leg out, but Gaines does a good job defending. Grabs that underhook. So you make Gaines, who uh, spent a long time as a boxer. Nice ankle pick for Gaines, looking for his own takedown. So single leg. Going for a single leg with his head on the outside. He's in danger there. He's getting in a head and arm guillotine by Alvarez. It's not where he wants to be. He's going for that underhook. Alvarez as he's trying to prevent any action. Now he's trying kind of with that guillotine choke at the top. You don't want to burn your arms out either. Kind of in between two places here is Alvarez. But that arm is starting to find its way underneath Gaines's neck. And Gaines's head is kind of pointing downwards towards the canvas. His head needs to be looking up at the lights if he wants to get out of that threat of guillotine and if he wants to complete that double leg takedown. He's pulled out of the choke and now trying to get vertical against Alvarez as they both fire rodillas into each other. Nice shot by Alvarez on the way from pummeling on that wizard. Marcus Gaines, again, one of the San Francisco-based gyms at the Dragon House. You heard he's from Sacramento. Sacramento's such a uh, wonderful fighting town. It's provided so many fighters and so many gyms as well. Under three to go here in this opening round. Alvarez has good head pressure. Even though he's up against the Jaula, he's got great head pressure on Gaines. And we'll see again the cardio you would imagine it's going to be an issue because of the short notice. Both these guys squeezing it out. We know Marcus Gaines likes to come out swinging. He is thrown, but nothing from long range. Nice knees from both fighters. Gaines keeping Alvarez there on the cage. Uh, what do you think of this strategy early on, and who do you think it favors? Um, I mean, it's hard to say because he is holding Alvarez up against the Jaula, but he's not really doing much to um, implement his own game plan. He's throwing some knees, but so is Alvarez. I mean, Alvarez is pinned, but Alvarez is also working. Tries to hit that fireman's, doesn't work, but Gaines now mm. got the head and arm. Oh, and he's out. Better round for Gaines as he did catch uh, Alvarez with that left knee right on the forehead. Now trying to get control of those wrists and fires off two quick lefts and the big knee as well. So Gaines with some power strikes here and now Alvarez a little shaky. Beautiful knee on the uh, exit for Gaines and he throws a massive uppercut that caught Alvarez's attention and Alvarez charges in to get that 
uh, single leg, and he gets reversed. Now Gain has his back, tries to go for a suplex. Second bite of the apple potentially here as he gets the back of Alvarez. Legs start to drag. We saw Alvarez off to a fast start in his last time in La Jaula. 180 degree turn here as he is on the short end of the stick. And Alvarez is bleeding, I think from the nose. Spins out, gets double overhooks. Yep, he's bleeding from the nose there. Listens to his corner as they go throw the knees and that's what he did, but just a couple. Under a minute in the opening round. Again, we'll see how these fighters hold up. Both corners very active, and that works, but Alvarez stays on top and now gains into the guard. He went to hit a suplex again and made the mistake of not quite turning his hips and it allowed Alvarez to get right on top, and that's not what he wanted to happen, but he was trying to make something happen. So, I mean, I understand that. He needs to close that guard, though, because Alvarez is just teeing off on him, and he has his back now. He has his back, but does he have enough time to finish it here? Five seconds to go. Going for the rear naked. Not going to get it. Not going to get it. The outlaw, Aussie outlaw Alvarez in the blue shorts got that name because he got uh, thrown in jail for one night for driving <laughs> on a suspended license. And uh, the next day, he went to weigh-ins and fought the next day, and uh, that's why they that's call a, him the outlaw. That's an outlaw right there. He's an outlaw. As they'll tend to his, uh, the blood from the nose. Let's see if there's a the deterioration here in round two. Alvarez and Gaines. This is Combate Americas, hashtag Combate Fresno. Save Mart Center. The site, you know, we were there and they had that beautiful gold canvas in La Jaula for Copa Combate. I really like how Gaines is constantly stalking with that jab, but he's not throwing it with enough authority that Alvarez is not respecting it. He's going in for the takedowns, he's trying to close the distance, but he needs to keep those strikes going because that's where he's most dangerous. He needs to make him respect him with his strikes. He's actually the taller party. Gaines very active with the kicks here in the opening round, or opening minute of round two. And now the fist starting to make some noise. Another attempt at a takedown, and Alvarez is missed on all three of those. They're a little telegraphed. He kind of charges in like a bull, but Gaines did a great job of sprawling, and he gets tossed. Little hip toss there for Alvarez. Beautiful transition for him. It's, he's missed on the takedowns, but What's happened from those takedowns is he's been able to flip gains once he's underneath. He finds a way to transition and chain wrestle so that he can get the position in the top position that he wants. He's like a ground and pounder, and Gaines is looking to get back to his feet, but Alvarez is on him like white on rice. Alvarez again looking for the back, and Gaines doesn't really prevent it, but this may be a better hold. Gaines had an opportunity there to switch and to to reverse his position, but he continued to do nothing and just kind of turtled shell when uh, Alvarez took his back. Gaines doing his best to keep that chin down, and that's preventing Alvarez from locking in the choke. Gaines continues to almost to Kembe Matumbo swipe away those arms each time Alvarez comes in, and Alvarez keeps trying. Alvarez now has a figure four body lock and uh, he's gonna have a better chance at getting that rear naked choke because he has his legs engaged. A lot of uh, rear naked choke comes from the legs and the, the powerhouse that you have in your core, so when you engage those legs, the spine elongates and the rear naked choke is a lot easier to get. That's getting a little deeper, and Alvarez senses it. That is a on the chin, but it also can make you tap. You don't want your chin to break because then you'll be sucking out of a straw for the next six weeks. This is a case of perseverance for Alvarez. If, if, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And he seems to think eventually that arm's gonna get underneath that chin. Gaines okay. reverses and he's back on top. I'm surprised Alvarez, and here come the elbows. Flying down on Alvarez. Gaines does a great job of getting that top position. Really tough fight to call it. The ebb and flow strange. Nicely done by Gaines to get out of that rear naked choke and hits him with a big uppercut on the way up. 
Fatigue setting in, and that one heard throughout the Safe Mart Center. A chopping kick from Gaines, who's starting to grow with confidence. Alvarez loses his footing on his attempted kick. Gaines trying to gain side control, no pun intended. Alvarez doing a good job of getting his guard back. He's got half butterfly guard there. Trying to clear that is Gaines. Gaines. needs to get right over that kneecap there. Able to get through there, Gaines, who is having a nice renaissance here late in round two. Gaines, the veteran of 45 fights. And he's done it at the tender age of 32. Very active fighter. He's fought everyone, and he's never shied away from taking a fight. He's been a long-time journeyman, and uh, he comes out swinging every time. So he's always game, always ready. Right, the tape of the right glove of Alvarez is loose. Not sure it be an issue, but we've certainly seen fights stopped in order to tend to that. And he lets Alvarez get back up. Under a minute. Round two, opening fight from Combate Fresno. And now Gaines finding the mark on those punches, left and right. Alvarez, legs getting a little jiggly there. Alvarez wants the clinch, he wants the takedown. You know that he's desperate for that takedown. He's kind of been telegraphing all of those takedowns and shooting in from far away with his head down. And Gaines Spinning just needs fist. to recognize Oof. that he wants nothing to do with those strikes. He just needs to lay those strikes right on him because he's finding oh. a ton of success with that. Crowd enjoying as Gaines finds his mark. Especially with that right hand, and now the knees. Knee to the oh, bread basket, the head. knee to the head, beautiful. Going high, he is doing a great job, Juliana, of coming from all sorts of angles. Definitely stealing the last seconds of this round, and uh, you can, you gotta understand, this is where you're finding the most success, so he's gotta come out round three and do this exact same thing. How about Marcus Gaines and the folks in Fresno enjoying it? Alvarez looks tired, but he's gonna, you would imagine have to have a big third round to walk out of here victorious. Absolutely, he's exhausted. Both fighters are exhausted, but that can even play a part in your head. Is this guy sitting on the stool? He's not even waiting for the stool. He's sitting down, <laughs> he on, the, down. on the canvas. He's tired. You've got to see that when you're in the corner and be like, I got to beat this guy. We thought it might go one round. Now you can see why we probably thought that as you have some tired fighters, although Gaines looking a little better for wear. Barely missed with that high kick was Gaines' uh, um, missed opportunity there, but he found it again, knee to the bread basket, giant knee to the head, and he was really finding the most success in this fight on the feet with his strikes. He needs to keep it up. Gaines looks good. Let's see if he can finish the job. How'd you see those first two rounds? Ooh, the first round was definitely hard to score. Second round, Gaines, Gaines. for sure. All right, so we'll, we'll, the mystery of the first round, and certainly Alvarez hopes that he was able to impress the judges there. Coming down to this, round three in Fresno. Gaines starts every round aggressively. Aggressive, and he's always taking the center of the howla. He's always coming forward. We expect to see Alvarez a little more aggressive here, knowing what happened in round two. Alvarez has to hide his takedown behind his strikes. He needs to strike to get into that clinch in order to get a successful takedown. Take him down, stay on top, and beat him into mashed potatoes if he can. <laughs> He's been 0 for 3 on takedown attempts. He finds a way to turn it around, yeah. though, so maybe he can do it again. Gaines, you can see the boxer coming out. There's the takedown attempt, and he's successful this time, and going double leg. So much momentum on that takedown that Gaines trying to get back to his feet, pinned up against the jaula. Alvarez needs to take those shoulder blades off of the jaula because he has that wall as support so that he can stand back up. He needs to get behind those shoulder blades and turn him off of the jaula. Trying to work that leg and get, get on his back, and he's done it. Again, he goes for the choke. The takedowns and the rear naked attempts have come up empty, but Alvarez feels at some point they're gonna bear some fruit. Maybe this is the time. Yeah, and you know, he's turtling up so well, and he's not really opening up so much that you can't really get that rear naked choke. You gotta beat it out of him. Start, start using your strikes. Now he's gonna get the leg control. Gaines not giving him an inch. 
Gaines really needs to clear those hooks off, but before he can do that, he needs to get his back, both shoulder blades on the Haula canvas. Trying to control that neck so he can find some real estate. See, Alvarez is softening up with those blows. He needs to continue to do that. Gaines very good with his hands to keep those arms of Alvarez at bay. Under three to go here in the final round of our opening matchup here in Combate Fresno. Gaines is trying to fight those feet, and he does, and he's back on top. Beautiful job, nice transition for Marcus Gaines. Oh, now Gaines throwing a couple punches along the way. And he doesn't have uh, that much time to seal the deal. He's kind of got a half can opener there. We were wondering about the fitness, but Gaines looks like he's got wind in the sails. He does. Gaines on, on his way to winning this fight unless something happens in Alvarez's favor very quickly. Big elbows from Marcus Gaines. Beautiful job. Continuing to work with the ground and pound. The veteran Gaines looking to win in his combate debut. Look at that guard all over the shop for Alvarez. He is just hanging off for survival and hoping he could do something in his last 90 seconds. Yeah, Marcus needs to pass. His, his guard is wide open. Happy to just hammer down with those fists in the meantime. And his face clean as a result. Marcus can pin that knee down and go straight up through the center and pass that guard of Alvarez, but he's content to just try to ground and pound him from where he's at. And Gets out, and Gaines lets him. Yep, Gaines lets him. Alvarez oh. his feet. He yes. just waited for him to come up, and he caught him, and now follows up with the fists. The ball is in Alvarez's court. Needs to do something here. Alvarez shook his head no. There's nothing behind those punches, though. Ooh, nice big head kick from Gaines, and he's taken down because of it. So two successful takedowns here for Alvarez in round three. That will do nothing but help him in the scorecards. Goes back from behind to try and get that choke. He almost had a reverse triangle there, um, but didn't quite finish it. And now he got reversed, and Alvarez with the back once again. Maybe he can finish this room and he can choke this time. Well, it, battle of attrition. Eventually he hopes it's going to work, but now time is not on his side. Gaines continues to block. Gaines doing a good job of hand fighting, not letting Alvarez ever get that choke completely in. Left arm, right arm. It's not, it's not going to lock in. It's that jigsaw puzzle missing that final piece. Ten seconds, final flurry of punches. Gaines is throwing his own punches. He don't care about that Runeka choke, and he reverses back on top like he's done every single time. <laughs> Gaines exchanges some words and picks him up, and Alvarez doing the smart thing, raising his arms. I don't know if there was enough there, Juliana, but close enough for Alvarez to have a sniff here, you would imagine. After, I mean, I think so, but... And that's a good thing that we're the announcers and not the judges, because yeah. that's not a job I envy. I think Alvarez has a claim here in the third round. I mean, he was active. Yeah, I think it's all going to depend on who they think won that first round, because it was so close. I think you're 100% spot on, and we will find out. This looks to be close on the scorecards in our opening fight here in Combate Americas. Patron! Let's take a look at the highlights. Big knee, both fighters exchanging knees in the clinch up against the Haula. Big strikes, left uh, uppercut and left hook for Gaines. He kept getting his back taken, however. This is a, an example of him getting his back taken, but he did find a way to reverse. Big head kick for Gaines, big huge knees to the head for Alvarez. Here in round three, we got some nice uppercuts, left hooks, and again, he gets his back taken, but also finds a way to get back on top again every single time. All right, big spot for these two fighters to see if they can remain in the ascension. Both corners look pretty optimistic, but there's only gonna be one that's smiling at the end. 
As you see, uh, Marcus Gaines, he had a uh, flip over flag. He had the USA and the Mexican flag kind of tied together almost as a poncho at the weigh-ins. Yeah, I didn't know that he was Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, cater to your audience. That's right. He's also Mexican, you're also all broken city. <laughs> well, it's like he, 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 like he heard what you said, Juliana. Yes. <laughs> Got hey, cater to your audience. Yep. And let's find out the official decision as we Ladies go up gentlemen, to Rudy Morales. Ladies and gentlemen, caballeros, después de tres rounds de guerra, after two rounds of pure war, the judges have reached a decision. The winner by unanimous decision. But before, I'm going to tell you what the judges said. Judge Marco Rosales scores it 30-27. Judge Ralph McKnight scores it 30-27. And George Michael Beltran scores it 30-26. And the winner by unanimous decision, Marcus Gaines. Wow. 30-27 from multiple judges. 30-26 yeah. in one. So he saw it as a 10-8 round. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but, I mean, I think that's the right decision. I think he won. I, I would have leaned towards Marcus Gaines. I would not have been surprised if it was split. 30-27. I... Well, good enough. Good for Marcus Gaines, a guy who's been at this for a long time. He's tasted hey, defeat. Victory go. is Andrea, sweet. Baby, baby. Dulce aquí en Fresno. We continue with much more action this bout. Three rounds in the lightweight division. Los jueces son Marcos Rosales, Ralph McKnight, and Mark Lawley. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestido de color azul, he steps in wearing the blue trunks. When he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 154 and three quarter pounds cuando pisó la báscula. Registró un peso oficial de 154 libras y tres cuartos. En su décimo primer combate a nivel profesional, con cuatro victorias, cinco derrotas y un empate, he enters La Jaula for the 11th time as a pro, with four victories, five losses, and one draw. Fighting out of Bakersfield, California, Cowboy Ryan Renault. Su rival en la esquina roja. His opponent in the red corner, wearing black, vestido de negro. Su peso oficial, 155 libras y media. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. A nivel profesional, se mantiene invicto con tres victorias. He enters La Jaula undefeated as a pro with three victories. Fighting out of Parley Air, California. El castigador, Adrián. All right, John, bend over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch comes now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business. Let's go. Uh, the voice of Mike Beltran. You got to love it as we go to the tail of the tape. And Guzman has youth on his side, but he has a one-inch height advantage, a one-inch reach advantage. We're at the lightweight. As you can see, Guzman cutting it close, but making weight 155.6. Yep. And without a doubt, the biggest pop of the night is Parlier, California. Scream for me. They came in numbers to cheer on their guy. Let's see if he can help them leave happy. It is Renault in the blue USA shorts. We get a lot of Central California, Bakersfield, the Fresno area for Guzman. It will be it stocked it down the road, perhaps. We'll, it's a big fighting town. It's incredible stuff that we have on tap. And this part of the country, as good as any when it comes to fighting. Guzman, you can see, is trying to get a feel for Renault. But if you notice, Renault will switch from southpaw to orthodox. And that comes from that taekwondo base that he's been doing since he was a kid. As we saw there, 13 years in taekwondo. And we know that is a martial art that is growing with steam here 
in the MMA community. It's becoming a real player, and fighters are finding success with that as their background. Giant elbow that barely misses, just grazes the top of Guzman's head, but if that would have landed, that would have been dangerous and possibly Oof, now big giant out. cut. I believe of Renault's it came out as Guzman closed in. Renault with a precision on his strikes. He's going to stop it, Mike Beltran. And Stay where you're at, put it in your mouth. Your mouthpiece. Oh, your oh mouthpiece. it was Guzman's mouthpiece. All right, let's go, fight. <laughs> Made it crystal clear. Mike Beltran is just one of the best in the games as far as referee is concerned. And with a little right hook there at the separation for Guzman. Oh, Ooh. cracking right kick. See, and here's the problem. Wrestler versus striker. Kuzman ate that kick like nothing and uh, went straight into the clinch and looking for the takedown. So you got to be careful if you're uh, Renault throwing those kicks like that because it leaves you susceptible to getting taken down. And that's exactly the ground that Kuzman wants to cover. This is his domain. And a the great elbow. takedown defense by Ryan Cowboy Renault. Defended that beautifully. He threw that body kick, made Renault eat it but he's back into the center of the howl and he's looking to get those precision strikes off once again. Hey, glad you could join us. Oh, that one caught the chin. Beautiful left hook. And again, two out of three making contact, both with that left jab. Now the right comes in. Oh, big sweeping machete punch. Oh, but he caught Guzman, Renault. Giant knee working on that front head draw. Has a gable grip sucked up. Yeah. Looked like he almost wanted to go to a uh, Dars oh, there. They are swinging for the fences here, Renault and Guzman. Now Guzman with his foot on the pedal. And Renault with the granite chin. He's been taking those shots right on the chin and still standing. Beautifully done. Nice takedown defense by Renault. He's the he's the striker here, but the defense showing that he's got some wherewithal when it comes to the ground game. Renault with the Giant underhook that gets him off of the howler. Missed wildly there, faints with the kick. Guzman closes in. That's where he wants to be. Guzman with the giant knee returning the favor. Oh, and Renault tried for a second one, but got lost a his leg. footing and yeah. got a single leg takedown. Beautiful. Very well executed by Renault as he looks to take the back. He sees an opening. He's a striker, but it looks like he's going to take the opportunity to hang on him and try to get a hook in if he can. You don't know. You, you, you hear about these fighters. Yeah, he wants to keep it on the ground, but Renault <laughs> looks pretty good when it gets to this position. Now he's locking it in. That's solid, and I like to say no hook. Oh, and there, Guzman just able to wiggle out. Oh, he's like saying he might be... Bulldog choke. He wants to take a look. He says to Beltran to take a closer look. Slipping out is Guzman. Didn't have it as tight as he thought. And there's a big knee. And another. Another knee. Oh, the left hook. And Renault looks like he's out. Good night. It's a guillotine right there. Yeah. No, nope, doesn't have it. Good execution, at least for the beginning. Close quarters. We've seen it all here in this opening round. Renault doing a good job of making sure that he's not getting caught in anything. Guzman sucks up that guard, closes it up. Guzman fighting from his back. Coming up on top. Looking for the can opener is Renault trying to open up that guard. Needs to get some strikes off though. Final seconds of this opening round. Guzman gets separation. Big left knee fires in. The big right kick as well. Renault making it, but then Guzman responds. Oh, up top! Renault has got a chin of solid steel. He didn't like that last one, Juliana. Uh, I don't care. He has been taking it and still coming. Well, Renault is stationary. He, he asked Mike Beltran to come over. He was like extending his jaw as if to say that last one caught him and it hurt. Beautiful job, beautiful round for both fighters. Back and forth action, nonstop. And Renault looks weary. There was a lot of connections made from both fighters, but Guzman is, is a, a real bulldog. Renault looks uncomfortable, barely opening his mouth that last time, and let's see, maybe we'll see why. 
big, huge left hook that corralled uh, Renault back into the party. Renault was trying to sneak out that side, and he just corralled him in with that left hook and said, come back here. There was knee after knee. This is where he thought he might have had Bulldog choke. choke. Yeah, that was a great job by Guzman to go to his back so that he could um, relieve the pressure that Renault had on that uh, Bulldog choke. Don't see that that often. Didn't quite work out for Renault as he's ready to go for round two. And if we can have anything close to round one, sign us up. Uh, Guzman just looks like he's just getting fired up. Yeah, he does. Renault breathing out of his mouth. Renault looks super tired. All right, round number two. Here at Combate Fresno, Guzman Renault. Renault needs to be a little bit more positionally aware with his head. He can't be ducking his head down and have better neck posture, nice strong neck so that his uh, head is not down there. Oh, Whoa. he caught it with a massive left kick and now looking for the finish. That's exactly what he got. Early days round two, El Castigador. Nice, beautiful done. I'm talking about your head being positionally aware and uh, Guzman went to go punish him and take his head clean right off. Renault dropped like a marionette that had his strings detached. <laughs> Cut from above. And the Punisher moves on to 4 and 0. Now yeah, he sh he's revealing the Superman on his chest with the celebration. Impressive. Guzman is maybe upset that Mike Beltran stopped the fight. I don't know, but he looked it was just pecking away in the first round, and it set the table for a quick finish in round number two. And this fight was a wrestler versus striker, but who says a wrestler can't knock you out? And there are the, the Punisher shirts for Guzman. As advertised, you, you get a following in this sport because you, you do stuff like that, and that following is gonna grow for Guzman. People wanna see him fight. I do. I for sure do. Here's the replay. Watch the big left. Caught him on the top of the head. Nice left high kick. Grazed him in the back of the head and just dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Here it is. Beautiful kick. Boom. Oh, right, right on, the, on temple. the temple. Yep. You okay with the stoppage? Um, I would have liked to see maybe a few seconds more. I don't think he was completely out. Looks like he was definitely still aware of what was going on. Those hammer throws from Guzman. Mike Beltran's job, however, is to keep the fighter safe. So yes. he's, he's the one that's in there in close proximity. If he sees uh, you in trouble, he's going to stop the fight. So nice job by uh, Mike Beltran to uh, keep our fighters nice and safe. All right, let's go inside La Jaula for the official decision. Lupe Contreras. Caballeros, el referee Mike Beltran detiene el combate con un tiempo oficial de 19 segundos del segundo episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mike Beltran steps in and calls a halt to this contest with an official time of 19 seconds of the second stanza, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, declarando el ganador por knockout técnico, still undefeated. Castigador Adrián Guzman. Punisher shirts throughout the Save Mart Center. My favorite part about calling fights with you, Juliana, and Combate Americas is seeing these guys seizing the moment, and that's exactly what Guzman did, not only getting the win, but putting on a show. Yeah, I said right in, when he was in the corner coming back out for round two, I was like, this guy looks like he's just catching steam, like he, or he's just now getting started. And uh, he definitely did. He, he made a solid case for going out there and just taking the guy's head right off. And Juliana, we talked about it in Mexicali. There is pressure fighting in your hometown. You, you, you're, you get tickets for your family and friends, and now you're here fighting, and you know, I gotta win this. We did it all. I gotta make sure that they're cheering for me at the end. We're very similar. We both like to come out and uh, get it going right from the start and throw heavy leather and uh, come out banging. I'm gonna outdo him in striking. 
I've been working a lot on my wrestling. I know he's gonna, he thinks he's gonna wrestle me or whatever he thinks, but you know, I've been working on that too. So, you know, he can try to do that and he can get submitted if he wants. But either way, uh, my aggression, you know, I got a chin, so he ain't gonna knock me out. I mean, his, his energy is like low, honestly. Um, I know he's gonna be ready, but you know, we're ready for whatever he has to bring to the table. We've been training hard for this camp bringing a lot of people in, so, you know, I'll be ready for whatever he has to bring to this. I've done most of my fights here. I'm from Fresno, California, so I'm right at home. So this is a guy, he talks to talks, got that great look. And there he is in a... Uh, Important spot for him at a catch weight, 150 pounds. See, maybe he can flex towards lightweight, or perhaps his best weight is down at 145 at featherweight. A lot of answers to the questions for Horta as he makes his way out inside La Jaula. And we'll see about it. Yep, he is making his Combate Americas debut and knows that this is a great stage for him to showcase his abilities, and he's very excited to be fighting for the promotion. Donning the Mexican and red, white, and blue. Two flags on his back. He was a running back and a safety in his football days, and I think when we look at all these sports, they all play a part. We talk about learning the martial arts, but that there's sports that you can take a bit out of. I think football certainly is one of them to help you in your mixed martial arts career. Aside from MMA, I would say football is definitely the toughest sport out there. You oh, know, yeah? your guys are going, these go, those guys are going right into a head-on collision every single play. Right. I think football, it sticks out because you can get hit from behind. You can get hit in your blind spot. And I think that's something that certainly plays in to mixed martial artists. We'll see what it does for Horta. As he comes in, maybe the biggest spot of his very young career, starting late again after his football and his service with the Naval Academy here at 28 years of age. And thank you for your service, Emilio Thank you. Horta. And I like his tattoo. It says, never accept defeat. So hopefully he has that type of mentality. And he'll be looking to avoid that against Steven Bollinger. So rival, his opponent, Steven Bollinger. All accounts, Bollinger a very good amateur, but this is his first fight as a professional. Clovis, California, again, not far from us in Fresno. Does have that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt. Steven Bollinger has a ton of pressure here tonight because a ton of his family and friends are here, and of course he wants that knockout. He's got a lot of uh, that family pressure. He wants to go out there and make a statement, especially with this being his pro debut. We mentioned the, the purple belt in BJJ. 18 years a wrestler. Now at 27, he's been doing it since he was in diapers, or just about. And now, after a spirited amateur career, looking to start his professional career 1-0. He's a coach as a volunteer on his free time, and as an amateur, he won two lightweight championships. He loves fighting and coaching. That's his passion. And uh, he missed that. Oh, we'll give it back to Lupe first. A un peso pactado de 150 libras, ladies and gentlemen. We continue with much more action. This about three rounds at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Our judges ringside are Marco Rosales, Ralph McKnight, and Mark Lawley. Presentando la esquina azul, introducing the blue corner. Vestido de color azul, he steps in wearing the blue trunks. He weighed in at an official 150 and three quarter pounds. Su peso oficial, 150 libras y tres cuartos. En su tercer combate dentro de la jaula, con record de una victoria y una derrota. He enters la jaula for the third time as a pro, with a record of one victory and one defeat. Fighting out of Ridgecrest, California, Emilio Horta. Wow. 
His opponent in the red corner. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido de color negro. He steps in wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 150 and three quarter pounds. De tuvo la báscula a un peso idéntico de 150 libras y tres cuartos. Esta noche, dentro de la jaula de combate Américas, hace su debut profesional tonight. Inside of the Howler of Combate Americas, he is making his professional debut, representing the Central Valley and fighting out of Clovis, California, Steven Bollinger. Our referee, Mike Beltran. All right, don't get over the rules already. Protect you off, off the time. Protect yourself at all time. Touch gloves now if you want. At the side of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. Handle your business. And uh, Bollinger getting a uh, Guzman-esque roar ahead of his introductions as we look at the tail of the tape. Both early in their careers, 27, 28, two inch height advantage and one inch via the reach, favoring Horta. Or to have spent time with the salon with the hair and the beard looking tight. But will it remain that way by the end of this fight? It is Horta in the blue. Horta already with the pressure. Some quick hands. Bollinger looking cool, calm, and collected. And then he throws the first big bomb with that right hand, but it missed. Bollinger nice and springy, ready to attack. Horta tries to get him off of him. Wow, big suplex! Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. Beautiful. Bollinger looking the part as he tries to clear the guard of Horta and Horta hanging on. He just got a big time wake up call. And he is going to get it if he keeps pressuring that kneecap down to the howla. He's a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu. Let's go for Triangle. Possibly. He's trying to fit the pieces together. Horta just needs to keep pressuring on that side. He's almost half, he's almost dead. He's almost passed. Almost, almost bent over backward. He's got those legs like arms. And now Bollinger gets the back. Bollinger, beautiful fighting here in this opening minute. And now he goes for the rear naked and oh, it's locked in. That's over. It could be Bollinger squeezing. Bollinger looking to put the final touches. That's tight. He needs that other hook in to complete it. Oh, he's gotten out. He's got Horta. that chin down. Beautiful job getting his back to the mat and. Oh, he's cleared the guard though. Bollinger takes top mount position. Oh man, that was so close. It's just been a minute and a half, but Bollinger impressing the lights out of me. I don't know, Juliana, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but what an impressive 90 seconds from him. Bollinger took the opportunity to get the party started early and hit the nastiest suplex I think I've ever seen. And wow. I got scared there for a second because I was like, please don't knock yourself out. But it was so great. He locked in a rear naked choke and went into mount, but he just got reversed. Let's see what he can do with the purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh, now Hortas stemmed the tide and turned the tables. And he will withdraw. Bollinger <laughs> back to his feet. Oh, he came in and he got a little dizzy. And Horta goes, did you like that? You want another? Horta just stood his ground and literally chucked a one-two. He didn't back up an inch. He bit down on that mouthpiece and he started slugging. And Bollinger looking tired from that action pack. Two minutes, good head movement, avoiding any further damage from Horta. How about these last two fights, folks? A warning for Bollinger from Mike Beltran. Stalking is Horta. Bollinger's back right up against the howl. A big giant overhand right for Horta. Oh, coming in. And he went right through the back door. Oh, he telegraphed that one. Bollinger might be in a little trouble. He looks dazed. Nice big head kick, but he paid for it. Tries oh. to go for a spinning elbow. And he, he, worked, he walked right into that. Horta looks fit as a fiddle. Throws Bollinger. Horta says, get off me. 90 seconds from the heavens for Bollinger, but Horta's changed everything. Caught him with the left and a right. Straight right down the clown's mouth. Beautiful ones and twos. Straight, beautiful punches for Horta. Horta was losing this. He's in a position at the very least to take this round after almost getting choked out. Bollinger with a takedown though. Great timing. 
Bollinger shot straight out of a cannon and got the double leg on Horta, sitting there in half guard. Nice shoulder pressure, beautiful shoulder pressure. He's going to look to pass that right knee. Very unorthodox attempt to clear the guard, almost over, and he might just be now, second time he's been able to go for the mount. This is a kill position. You can't afford to lose this position. You're in mount, you gotta stay there. You gotta have nice, tight, heavy hips. Well, you don't see ebb and flows like this. It went from one side to the next, and now back to where we started for Bollinger. Horta needs to be careful when he tries to get out of mount that he's not giving up his back to put him in a worse position. It's an elbow party now. Beautiful head and arm transition for Bollinger, looking to suck in that head and arm and get that oh. tap. Oh, little enchilada there, little covering the nose. And the blood coming from the left cheek of Horta. A different choke hold here, and he might have it. What? Yeah, that's that's deep, but he gets out of Horta. Too hungry, too hungry. <laughs> 10 seconds. Oh, big right, Horta. And, and now he goes for the guillotine, and then he might have it at the end of the first. I would hope. What a round. Oh my gosh, that was such a good round. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's, what do you got? Let's. Let's, Let's catch our breath. Yes, please. Not just us, the fighters. Emilio Horta needs to be aware of the fact that Bollinger is desperate for the takedown, and if he gets too hasty with his strikes, he's going to get taken down like we saw Bollinger do. He waited for the timing of Horta and sh shot a perfectly timed double leg that got Horta down to the ground. He was in mount two times. Round number two, Mike Beltran waiting. Bollinger looks tired. More tired, I think. Precious seconds for them to collect their bearings. Bollinger, Horta, back and forth. It was Bollinger who had those two good sequences that probably separated him from Horta in round one. Oh, both guys trade. Bollinger looks away, though. Oh, now he can unload with a Rodisha. It's a nice high-level fight. Beautiful one and two for Horta. Close quarters, working out for Horta. Bollinger showing his craftiness. He gave uh, the middle part of that first round away. Bollinger's clinch game is going to be key here. He needs to find a way to clinch up with Horta where he finds his best chance, and he does a beautiful time double leg again. Horta getting too outstretched with the strikes, which is leading him to get taken down every single time. Horta's just, or Bollinger's just changing levels at the right time and getting those takedowns. They're almost too easy. It bears repeating, Juliana, this is the first professional fight for Bollinger. He looks like a savvy veteran for the most part. Look for Bollinger to take Horta away from the fence. Spinning away from the fence, as you mentioned, trying to make sure that Horta doesn't get any advantage from his back. And again, he goes for that choke over the top of the arm. He has the head and arm, but he just needs to be a little bit more patient here. Clearing that left leg that is stuck right now. He uses the hand to fight the kneecap. He's almost there. And Horta is very aware that he's almost caught in a choke, so he's definitely trying to get his arm back. And now looking for the mount as well. Bollinger, what a pleasant surprise with a beautiful fight as he looks for a Kimura possibly, and he might have it. Americana switches to an Americana. Oh, and Horta able to slip away. Yeah, too hungry. Stephen Bollinger's doing a really great job of getting in these positions where he can finish the fight, and it's just slipping away by inches. This is a game of inches, and when you're sweaty, it's hard to get that finish. <laughs> Taking the back is Bollinger. Sneaky, sneaky, nice underhook, and here comes the reversal, double uh, knee tap, excuse me. This is going back and forth. Both have spent some time on their back. Okay, Bollinger. Almost like a, a, a dance partner's just exchanging the lead. Yep, Bollinger is here. Again. Eyes are closed for Horta. Cross face, let's get a cross face in there. Because uh, Horta knows what he wants, so he's trying to suck him up as tight as possible so that Bollinger can't have any space to get anything. Yeah, we have been impressed here, Juliana, with the defense of both. Uh, in both cases, have had chances to finish the fight, but the defensive posture has been good for both. 
Again, looking for that Americana as Bollinger on top, making oh, and that's Horta bending. Paint, paint the canvas. That's tight. That's yucky. Horta's trying to get out and straighten his arm. And he's going to get caught into an arm bar on the transition. He might, that might just be in the process of getting to get that arm bar. It's still in, it's still in play here. Ooh, and that second leg creeps over, and that's when you know it's it's not good. He can still get out here. Horta can still hitchhiker, and not only hitchhiker, this is doing the beautiful transition of he's stacking out. him and gets his elbow out. Gorgeous, gorgeous defense by Horta. Yeah, we've seen it from both, and some nice jujitsu there from Bollinger, but not good enough as Horta takes the top position. We heard from the uh, the corner for Horta is it's to break his posture. I don't really understand That's, that because that is Bollinger's completely on the ground with his back on the yeah, mat. Yeah, Horta's got his, control his posture's here. broken. <laughs> <laughs> Juliana Pena, ladies and gentlemen, can turn a phrase like none other. Nice guillotine, but the arm is in and the shoulder pressure is deep for Bollinger, so he's no threat. He's in no threat here for a choke. And in fact, he can even choke Horta here. And again, oh Bollinger, there, he's just an active body, Bollinger. And it, it's, there's, this is nonstop motion as both react and counter-react and continue to find new positions. My goodness, Horta, you can just see the pure strength of him. He's just able to flip him and flop him any way just based on pure strength. And that's a gorgeous job, but Bollinger, again, with the top position, he's able to transition back to top, and he needs a finish here. Heading to the end of round two. Looking for the Kimura or the Americana again, but Horta does a great job of getting to his side, activating and hiding that hip and using that rear, or excuse me, underhook to try to advance his position. Bollinger finishes round two on top. Very groggy as he heads towards what Potentially could be a winner take all round three. It's hard to say. It's like I feel Bollinger won that first round, but there was enough Horta moments to, to give me pause here in both round one and round two. Oh man, I, I would agree. I love that Bollinger is finding the right moments. He just needs to put it all together now. He's getting the takedowns with ease. He's having the positional moments, but Emilio Horta, you gotta give it to this guy. He's just so strong. To the highlights. A lot of feints with the hands, and then Bollinger waited and took him down. Nice level change and sucked up that single leg and just transitioned straight into a double leg. Flared that leg and did exactly what he was supposed to do to get the takedown. Elbow just missed by Horta. Hope to see these two guys again down the road in 2019. A beautiful fight here. Uh, contrast in styles and then there was a merge of styles as well they're both tired but they both have that fitness that needs to take them through a big round three and bollinger was supposed to actually fight for combate in fresno for the copa combate but uh, his opportunity has finally come he's here it's here ladies and gentlemen friday night fights stephen bollinger looking to get his first win in his first professional uh, fight takes it down again it's there's been a lot of takedowns and moments on the, during you would call the ground game Juliana, but it's been an action-packed ground game when we've been on the on the canvas between these two. I mean, Bollinger's literally taking Horta down at will. At any point in time, he can take him down, but he's having trouble in the finishes and finishing his techniques. He's not satisfied with just taking them out. He he's an active participant on the ground against Horta. You're in that mount position. I would say cross face posture up and let it rain get that ground and pound in start tko and his punch a hole through his face Horta aware of that and holding those arms as he tried to separate there's that cross face that i'm looking for hopefully he can finish that look with the enchilada he's covering his mouth so that he can't breathe horta very cagey as horta almost able to displace him but it is bollinger as you hear mike beltran wanting some action here and it's hard to get that action off because Horta's sucking him up with that gable grip so that he can't tee off on him. But that's why that cross face is so important. He needs to separate himself and gain some distance. Bollinger giving some action and getting that cross face. Bollinger with the uh, 
the crowd on his side as he's got fans from nearby Clovis joining him here in Fresno. This was a big spot for him. Great hips by Bollinger, not getting rolled out of mount. Looking for that key lock, Americana again. Steven Bollinger looking to finish the job here in Fresno. Three minutes to go in our final round. Has stayed on top of this mount throughout round three. Yeah, I, I definitely think he's he's probably thinking, all right, this is the third time I've mounted you. You're not getting out this time. Almost tried to go for that Americana a third time here. I think uh, Mike Beltran with the second time, second warning, and you wonder if there's not enough. They'll be brought to their feet, and Bollinger knows that, and he'll keep firing away. And that's what I want to see from him. You're in the superior position. Let it rain. You see the uh, the jujitsu. You've seen the wrestling. And you've seen enough striking to potentially eyes. getting home as Horta gets those those fingers up in the eyes of Bollinger. Almost a desperate move for a desperate fighter. I'll tell you why it's not working. The back of the tricep is on the opposite side, so he's not being able to use the side of his head as a forcep so that he can make him paint the mat with that Americana. And it's not working out because the back of his tricep is above his head instead of on the side of his ear. Steven Bollinger remaining active on top. Under two to go. And I think this will suit him just fine. He's just gonna show enough action here for the referee. He needs to start ear hole punching something. You're in mount, like do something. Is this spot for separation from Mike Beltran's perspective? Porta looking to, or Bollinger looking there to create some space, and there it is. You gotta get dirty, you know? You, yeah, it sucks to say, but that's the spot where you gotta get dirty and into dig that forearm into their face so that you can separate to get that those punches off. Unloading there in the ribs, and he's gonna have to, Horta finally able to spin away. Beautiful job by Horta. Horta may need to go for a finish here based on what's happened here in this third round. Bollinger gets the reversal and does not let Horta back up to his feet. And looking to pass, he's inside control. One minute to go here, Combate Fresno. Horta has a gable grip so that Bollinger can't implement any of his submission finishes and he's trying to reverse him yet again but it lands him lands Bollinger into mount because of it I believe the chance is Steven resonating from the Save Mart Center is Bollinger squeezing whatever remains out of Horta 30 seconds to go a dominant round three all on the ground and he's been able to rest a little bit along the way yeah, and Mount's not a resting position, but I mean, it can be considered a, a resting position. I'm surprised, actually, Mike Beltran hasn't stood them back yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, there he goes, firing down those elbows to finish the yeah. job, to seal the deal, and maybe he does it that's, with a rear naked. That's tight, I think, I'm pretty sure. Can he drop the hips in? Oh, nope. Nope. He's out. Oh, it's over. Oh, Steven Bollinger. Steven Bollinger, the crowd favorite, friends and family, a ton of them there, here in the Fresno crowd. Ground game of Palooza there that may have just put him over the top to make his pro debut a victorious one. There is frustration etched on the face of Horta, no doubt about it. Damas y caballeros, después de completar tres vueltas, esta es la decisión oficial. Ladies and gentlemen, after going all three rounds, the official scorecard reads as follows. El juez Rosales anotó. 30 a 27, Judge Rosales scores it. 30 to 27. El juez McKnight. 29 a 28, Judge McKnight scores it. 29 to 28. Y el juez Lawley anotó. 30 a 26, Judge Lawley scores it. 30 to 26. All in favor of the winner. By way of unanimous decision, los tres a favor del ganador, por decisión unánime. From Clovis, California, Steven Bollinger. <laughs> He'd be a great poker player, just very little emotion on his face, but two of the judges seeing it 30 27, the third 29 28. Definitely, and that was one thing that uh, 
his opponent said about him. He's he's not really showing any much energy, kind of low energy, and I think, you know, I'm going to be able to get him. But it was Bollinger with the low energy that came in and stole the rounds. 30-27, he did a great job. Had the takedowns whenever he wanted, had the submissions as he was um, transitioning into mount arm bars. Two wonderful fights back to back here and we hope for that to continue as we will be going at the 135 pound featherweight division. It's Jose Avalos, Hector Fajardo. I think my strength to win this fight is to close the gap and make it a grappling match. Make it a grappling match and uh, submit them in the easiest, smoothest way possible. The whole game plan, the way it's going to go the way I want it to go. My angles, my movement, my speed, my conditioning, everything. I feel like he's real prideful. He's real cocky, and uh, I'm not. We're not here to, to, you know, we're here to fight. So I know that I can perform. I, I've been doing this since I was a little kid, and we're ready to do it inside. We're ready to show him what we're about. Uh, fighting for combat is huge. Especially if you know for the Latin American community, me being uh, Mexican of origin. Um, not to mention also fighting in Fresno. I fought here before as an amateur, and uh, it's always been positive vibes. So I'm just excited to uh, bring up more positive vibes. It's always great when I fight in Fresno. Across la jaula, al lado opuesto de la jaula, Jose Avalo. So you hear the cheer, and Avalos also from Parlier, California, which was the hometown of Adrian Guzman, who we saw win earlier tonight. And there was a huge pop for him. And Avalos hopes he heads the same direction. Alvaro's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He uh, went to the World Championships as a white belt and the Pan American Championships. He's won a gold medal at the San Diego Open as a blue belt. Former. United States Marine Corps member. And what he likes to do most on his free time, like any fighter, is rest. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, a good sleep. Rest and recovery or else you can't get up and go get beat up the next day and do it all over again. You gotta have your recovery and you gotta have your rest. I had a good sleep last night. I had a No, I met you sleep. for some dinner, I had a nice sleep afterwards. Oh, I had the best sleep I've had in nine months well, yesterday. There, there's some news breaking here <laughs> right now. <laughs> the news that's breaking <laughs> is that Alvaro's is not afraid of anyone, and he said that his opponent doesn't have anything he's not seen before. A moment as he enters La Jaula, to the delight of his fans who have come up to the Save Mart Center in support. All right, we're expecting a good one. The no love lost. These two both looking for a big win at the expense of the other. Back to Lupe. Más acción dentro de la jaula de Combate Américas. Este combate. Tres vueltas en la división peso gallo, ladies and gentlemen. We continue with much more action inside la jaula de Combate Américas. This bout three rounds in the bantamweight division. Los jueces, Marco Rosales, Ralph McKnight y Mike Beltrán. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de pantaloncillos verdes, introducing the blue corner. He steps in wearing the green trunks. He weighed in at an official 135 and one half pounds. Detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 135 libras y media. Entra la jaula en su segundo combate a nivel profesional con una victoria. He enters la jaula in his second pro bout with a record of one victory. Representing Sacramento, California. El Matador Fajardo. In the red corner, in the esquina roja, vestido de color azul, he steps in wearing the blue trunks. He weighed in at 135 and three quarter pounds. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y tres cuartos. En su quinto combate a nivel profesional, con record de tres victorias y una derrota. He enters La Jaula for the fifth time as a professional with a record of three victories and one defeat. Representing Parlier, California, Jose Steelmatic Avalos. Our referee, Mark Lawley.
All right, fighters, we've gone over the rules of bat. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. Touch gloves and let's have a good, clean fight. <laughs> a lot in the faces there here in the Bantamweights, and it is a, a three-inch advantage for Fajardo and a two-inch reach edge, and you can see him certainly uh, rising above in the stare down with Avalos. We're at 135. And Fajardo soaking in some of the uh, jeers and the boos from the crowd here that love their local products. And Avalos is one. Round one here in Combate Fresno. And already fist flying. Fajardo in the south paw stance, green shorts. He said from uh, born in East Palo Alto, representing Sacramento. Representing Team Alpha Male, he's got Andre Feely in his corner, who just picked up a win for UFC Phoenix last Sunday. But one of my favorite nicknames in all of MMA, Andre Touchy Feely. Yeah, and he's a savage Feely, and he trains with uh, Hector Fajardo. Yeah, and Hector Fajardo, El Matador. Uh, interesting nickname on the other end. We got Stematic is Jose Avalos's nickname. Big kick up from the left. Looked like Avalos blocked most of it as he goes for the. Uh, the takedown. Goes for a takedown a little too telegraphed, and let's see if he gets it, completes it. Double leg. Almost home. <laughs> Moving towards the back of Fajardo. Fajardo needs to get those hips out, fight those hands. Hips out, fight the hands. Again, keeping this, oh, going for the suplex. Fajardo doesn't let him have it. Avalos doing a great job with that body lock. He's not letting Fajardo go anywhere. Looking to get that hook in. But Fajardo is right in front of his corner, listening to everything very intently to what Andre Feely is telling him. Avalos got that back, trying to keep it tight. Fajardo needs hips out, and he's got to fight those hands. He's got to break that gable grip that Avalos has around his waist. Doing a good job trying to turn into his opponent. And using the cage to his benefit. It's a balancing act here as Avalos goes for that single leg again. And Kimura. Maybe, maybe something brewing here for Fajardo. Fajardo just needs to stay hard on that. He's got his hands locked. Oh, he lets it go. And Fajardo, highly ranked in U.S. Judo. And I knew you couldn't wait, and we touched on this, competed in football and dodgeball. In dodgeball. And if you could dodge a wrench. You can dodge a fist. That's right. Yeah, he is a dodgeball champion. He's got an underhook there. He might have something brouhaha-ing against Avalos. I don't know why he lets that go. He couldn't reverse his position from there. Still keeps his feet, which is no minor feat. There it is again, but he's, he's letting it go. He needs to use that underhook to guide his opponent off of him. Dropping some elbows on Avalos. The Fresno fighters, always a big part of the, the hometown fighters. How do they do? So far, Fresno's having a good one. Fajardo doing a really good job of staying on his feet. He hasn't been taken down successfully yet. He's doing a good job of defending, using those elbows. And uh, Alvalo's head is buried. He needs to yank out that single leg. And he's, Fajardo's right in front of his corner, so he's getting some coaching, and it seems to be paying off. If he can get that leg away, he finally does. Avalos with the spinning back fist. And Avalos with the separation, and they're back to the center of the jaula. Southpaw stands for Fajardo in the green shorts, and he eats a leg, outside leg kick, but doesn't even blink. Couple good lefts by Fajardo. One of them certainly found its mark. As they engage again here with about a minute to go in this opening round. Fajardo doing a good job of getting that underhook. He just needs to jack it up to the moon. Yeah, he got that first one in, and now... He abandons it again. Yep. Now going for that meat grinder as well. Nice job of staying on his feet as Fajardo. He needs to get that underhook and jack it up to the moon, Alice. Yeah, the most dated reference, Benya. What's going on? Uh, 
Whatever keeps in your mind. <laughs> nice tree top for Ivalos. Oh, he's, he could be in trouble here. Down and he goes. Down. To me, the most impressive thing of this fight thus far was the balance by Fajardo, but eventually he goes to the ground. Beautiful balance. Avalos wants to pass to the left. But Fajardo is doing a good job of keeping him close. Almost thought that triangle, but did quite have the right position. Side control, or excuse me, half guard, straight into mount, but Fajardo's out, and he reverses, and now he wants to get his own punishment. Ten seconds to go here. Fajardo looking to unload with some left hands, but it's Avalos who comes in. Both fighters trading with gigantic head kicks. Those are gorgeous. Okay, end of the first round. Yeah, they like that. You like that? Yeah. Double bags of ice for Avalos, who uh, had the upper hand. He certainly had that single leg control for the majority of that opening round. Didn't do a whole lot with it, but in the process, kept Fajardo's striking game at bay. Now everything to fight for here in round number two. Avalos is sweaty. He's just pouring sweat. And that is the result of hard work. All right, Combate Fresno getting around for round number two. Hector Fajardo in the green. Jose Avalos. In the blue. Fajardo, see if he keep this on his feet and dictate the tempo. Nice little feints from Fajardo. Big opportunity for both fighters in the infancy of their combate careers. See, every time he throws that feint, Avalos bites on it. Follow that feint up with your punches. Well, Avalos kind of ducked out of there without much contact. He's right on his trail mark. Fajardo with a big left, tries to go for a throw. Fajardo really good at digging in and keeping that head down to get his desired result. Wrestler for some time, competed at jujitsu. Fajardo's got a wizard on one side. He needs to dig that underhook, but he's back out. Takes the center of the jaula. Nicely done by Fajardo. Nice head kick, but it's blocked by Avalos. So we can go back to the well here as Fajardo retreats for a moment to get a better angle. Avalos looks like he's losing a little steam. Perhaps nothing making contact, but a game of patience here. Big down, huge double down. leg. That was big. Shot right out of a cannon. Avalos looking to pass that guard, butterfly guard for Fajardo. All the preparation and all the hype in the case of Fajardo. We haven't seen it yet. Give Avalos all the credit to make sure that it remains a mystery. Fajardo is definitely staying busy there. He's punching with elbows, doing everything he can. He's got a triangle locked up. That's deep. That's super deep. That's super deep. Oh, yeah. he might have the angle. He's tapped out. The arm bar out of no. Triangle armbar, beautiful transition for Fajardo. And uh, Avalos kind of punched himself right into a submission. Total respect. Avalos oh. had all the momentum, and in a flash, that's what it's all about in mixed martial arts. Everything changes. And what a moment for Fajardo. So cute. Beautiful job. Nice finish. Making a statement in this Combate Americas debut. Winner with a triangle choke. Big time result for Fajardo, who wasn't able to get anything going until he did, and then it was all over. All right. Fajardo the victor, 1-0 in Combate Americas for the official decision. Let's go back inside La Aula. A little baile.
for Fajardo. Let's go up to Lupe Contreras. Let's take a look one more at the finish here, Juliana. Nice triangle. Avalos punched himself into a submission. Sucked up that triangle like he had it, and he completed that. That was so deep. Beautiful job. He even throws an arm bar just for kicks there. And then, really, we didn't even see it develop, and then all of a sudden, it's there, and it's over. And a wonderful moment for Fajardo as he gets a big-time win and his uh, pro MMA career off and running. Lupe! a darse por vencido con un tiempo oficial de dos minutos, cuatro segundos del segundo episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner sinks in a triangle, forcing his opponent to tap with an official time of two minutes, four seconds of the second round. Your winner, by way of submission, el vencedor por sumisión, el matador. evento que es México contra Estados Unidos, aparte de, de, de que me avisaron en ponerme la piel chinita, bueno, me puse mi chip de que, bueno, es otra pelea más y vamos a hacerlo y, y obviamente representar con orgullo y, y nada, ¿no? O sea, obviamente representar a toda la raza mexicana y... I live in Sacramento, I'm on Team Alpha Male. Um, I've been there about 10 years now, but I'm actually from a little town called Lamore right down the street, so it's great. All my friends and family get to come and see. Maybe a couple old foes, but uh, he's tough, man. Uh, I can tell that he's gonna come for a war. Él viene a pelear y yo también vengo a lo mismo, ¿no? Venimos a plantarnos y pelear y, y como lo dijo él, dar un espectáculo y, y no esperen menos de eso. All right, we're ready for the main event, and we have as compelling a co-main event that could be a main event any night. The folks in Fresno are buzzing, anticipating a big-time matchup that we have been building up for the last two weeks. El Gallo Negro, the shark, the rooster, and the shark to do battle. Let's take it to Lupe Contreras for the introductions. All right, here is Pablo Sabori. By the way, he is a he is a beautiful speaker. When you hear him speak, you understand, it's an eloquence in his language of Spanish there from Sonora in Mexico, and he is ready to pick up where he left off back there at the end, right here in this town. He beat Michael Irisari in the Copa Combate alternate bout. Unfortunately for Sabori, and fortunate for all of us, no one got injured as we go back up to Lupe Contreras. Big time veteran of the California MMA scene. This is a guy well regarded in these parts and throughout California. And if he can piece together some wins here, this is a guy you'll be seeing in many men events in the years ahead. Anthony the Shark Avila. He's dangerous because he's the shark. He wants to bring Pablo Sabori into the water so that he can do what he does best. He is a longtime vet in California, and he has been fighting for a while, 17 and 5. He's 30 years old. He's a, he was a standout wrestler in high school, and he considers combat sports his first true love. Mexican-American, his family supports him unconditionally, and they come to his fights, as you can hear them screaming in the background when he's competing locally. All right, for the introductions to Lupe Contreras inside La Jaula.
as you hear some of the chants of Sabori. Ladies and gentlemen, from Save Mart Center, continuamos con mucha más acción dentro de la jaula. We continue with much more action inside of la jaula. Este duelo, pactado a tres vueltas, a un peso de 150 libras, this bout. Three rounds at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Our judges are, los jueces son, Marco Rosales, Ralph McKnight, y Mark Lawley. And now, Fresno, California. This is the main event of the evening. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche. Combate Américas, México versus the USA. Y veremos quién es el más macho. Introducing first. Presentando a la esquina azul. Vestido de negro con el tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. He steps in wearing black with the colors of Mexico, green, white and red. He weighed in at an official 149 and one quarter pounds. Detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 149 libras y un cuarto. En 14 combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de nueve victorias y cinco derrotas en 14 pro bouts. He maintains a record of nine victories against five losses. Representando a San Luis, Rio Colorado, Sonora, México, El Gallo Negro. Pablo Sabori. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing American red, white, and blue, vestido los colores estadounidenses de rojo, azul y blanco. Su peso oficial, 151 libras, his official weight, 151 pounds. En 22 combates profesionales, mantiene un record de 17 victorias y 5 derrotas in 22 pro bouts. He maintains a record of 17 victories against 5 losses. Fighting out of Sacramento, California, Anthony the Shark Avila. The referee, Mike Beltran. All right, jump in over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch goes now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business. Let's go. All right, in the good hands of Mike Beltran as we go to the tail of the tape. Avila, four years the senior. Sabori with a one-inch height advantage, two via the reach. We're at a catch weight of 150. And we know Sabori fought it. 145 was part of that matchup there at the featherweight Copa Combate tournament. We're underway. We've been looking forward to this. I know you have too. We are live on the zone. Combate Americas in Fresno. It is Sabori in black. Both fighters coming out in the orthodox stances. Pablo Sabori strikes me as one of my favorite guys in the company because he's always constantly taking the toughest fights that there is. Never saying no and also wanted to avenge a loss of his teammate who um, lost to Avila. Well, both right legs meeting halfway and blocking each other's, and the left leg of Sabori comes alight shortly thereafter. Mexico versus the United States, the rooster versus the shark, Avila Sabori. Avila being nice and patient, switching stances there, mixing it up. Avila did a nice job to close the clinch. Been training with the uh, Team Alpha Male for 10 years. Got Andre, Andre Feely in his corner. Just picked up a win with UFC Phoenix last Sunday. Double underhooks for Avila and oh, body big time lock dump from Avila. That was a great, beautiful takedown. My favorite takedown, actually. Avila taking side control. He mentioned he was looking for a big, good 15-minute fight. Sabori said, "Espectacular. We will provide a spectacular." A nice, heavy hips. Anthony Avila, Pablo Sabori looking to try to get his guard back, but Anthony Avila is kind of sitting on that head where he can try to get a guillotine, which is one of uh, Team Alpha Male's signature moves. Sabori in a bit of a bad spot. He's holding on to that cage with his feet, finally detaches. Ooh, and he gets his guard back. Nicely done by Pablo Sabori. Sabori dropping some elbows. 
And Avila he takes the guard. Right in front of his corner. I'm glad you're with us here on the zone. Max Bredos, Juliana Peña. The main event is here. Big time co-main event. We also have Daniel D. Rod Rodriguez, who is as entertaining as you can find in this sport. Avila's corner is asking him to drag him off of the jaula so that he doesn't have that wall as a as a support. We mentioned how Avila said 2018, the best year of his life. He had some hurdles to clear. He was one point was wondering if MMA was for him. As oh. Sabori responds, looking for that triangle. Wow, reverse triangle by Pablo Sabori. That was a beautiful transition. Now he's in an arm bar. Oh, and he spins oh, in wow. to more issues here. Sabori reaching up. The joint is just not that correct. Doesn't quite have the connection. No, nope. and he's out. If he can get that elbow out, he'll be good. Oh, and he did the favor on Chris, on Anthony Avila. How about Hand that? And in the armpit, stood right back up. Beautiful job. Pablo Sabori, game. Sabori has fought some of the toughest at 145. Levi Marroquin. Alejandro Flores. Alejandro Flores. He's fought the who's a who's in the Combate Americas banner. And Pablo Savori's really finding a lot of success with those leg kicks. You can tell that they're bothering Avila. I want to see if he's going to continue with those. Savori, who has dealt with injury issues at one point, was supposed to fight Froggy Estrada. Did it happen? Hoping that is in his past. And hoping a win over Avila, who caught him coming in. Avila with that left. Big left hook for Avila. Mexico versus America here. Sabori's coach has said he's had opponent Avila who beat Jose Luis Verdugo in Sacramento. Big, oh, that one hurt him. Took a little wind out, and now he's taking that lead leg. Avila in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I see, I see Sabori having the most success with those leg kicks, taking that table right out from oh. underneath Avila. Yeah, and he knows it. Let's see if he continues to go. Oh, how about that response from Avila? Nice return by Avila. Again. Deep kick. Now Savori taking the center of La Jaula, looking to continue to apply the pressure on the shark. And he's stalking him. Oh, a little like stop the talking. Big head kick with the left boot. Oh, and then Avila comes in with that short left hand. And again. It's working. Oh, he's put him out. Avila now. Three big left hands. It continues. Somebody on Groggy Street. Another one. And oh, the first round ends. Jeez. Avila sending a little business card to somebody whose quarter and his fans are stunned. Pablo Savori does not have any idea where he's at right now. That was amazing, amazing strikes by Avila wow. there in the last 10 seconds. And he's coming back too. Pablo Savori is tough though. It's going to take a lot more than that to get him to quit coming at you. Control the distance. You have to control the distance. Okay. And that's it. There he goes in English and Spanish. Control that distance. And that left hand worked. And he went again. And the third time he dropped Sabori. What a response. Saved by the bell was El Gallo Negro. Pretty intense opening round here in Fresno in our main event. Sabori's putting that, that chin to be hit there sometimes. This was early in the round. Beautiful done. That connects. Nice high kick. Pablo Sabori like getting here. his second wind. Come, his bearings are coming back. <laughs> Avila wants to get in there. Beltran says, take it back. All right, now we'll get the second round. And the Shark ending the first round with a flurry and flooring his opponent. He's going right back to that game plan. And Sabori not controlling the distance as his corner advised. Well, it's hard when someone's coming at you with gigantic left and right hooks. Osevo, Osevo. 
Nice little looping left hook. And again for Avila trying to close that distance. Both men kicking at the same time. That left hand is a huge weapon here. It's changed everything. He is an orthodox fighter, but finding a lot of success going to Southpaw. He's, he knows that. He knows that's the moneymaker, and he keeps going Sabori's way, although Sabori flushed that one out. And he lands again with that left hook. Uh-oh, is there a low blow? And Mike Beltran calls a time in the second round. Low kick. He says, are you good? Not quite. Not there yet. And we have seen a shots to the groin affect main event fights elsewhere in the MMA world. It's, uh, it's serious business. Got to protect these fighters. And Avila can take his time here. He's got five minutes to recover. He says he's ready to go. It was accidental, and Avila thumbs up to agreement. Sabori apologizes, and it's water under the bridge at this point. Easy for me to say. Now Sabori takes the center. He got caught with that left again. He's getting caught because he's trying to throw a head or a body kick or a leg kick. Now this southpaw stance is bearing a lot of fruit, and again, that left kick, left he's not seeing foot. it, Juliana. Got to keep that hands up. His hands are real low. Now he's going left-handed. Sabori, again the left hand finds its mark. And you can see the welts developing on the right side of Sabori's face. Sabori's finding success with those low leg kicks. And Avila just eats it and comes in hard with that left hook. Look at that. Contrast in styles and reacting to what the other guy is doing and finding a response. And Sabori seems to have weathered the storm to protect the right side of his face. Sabori's a gritty fighter. He's able to take and withhold everything that Avila has thrown at him. He's willing to stand, and he's trying to take that lead leg out of the uh, of Chris Avila. Excuse oh, me, again. Anthony Avila. That left hand, every time Avila throws it, it connects. Back to southpaw, and back to orthodox for Sabori, who hits the lead leg. And Avila tagging him. And Sabori just content to just wait there. And there's one, two. More of a left hook, actually. Big head kick. Neither of these fighters with a long layoff. Uh, Sabori fighting in December. And Avila last fighting in November. That time the left misses. So Sabori may be able to control the distance a little better as we head towards the final fires of round number two. And Sabori just taking those left hooks right on the chin. Oh, he caught it again. Getting caught in the back of the head, throws his equilibrium off a little bit. Sabori still in the firefight though, moving his head. Body kicks for both gentlemen. Nice switch stance. I mean, that's so good in going back and forth. And both those hands can be good for jabs and good for the power punches. Nicely done for Sabori <laughs> to get out of the way. Just froze there to not ruin the aesthetics of the punch, which did not connect. And Sabori's staying busy. He knows that he can't wait for Avila. Oh, eats that clean, but still coming forward. Nice low leg kick for Pablo Sabori, and he goes up high top. And now, and now I mean, like, is able to get into close range, and he's really good at keeping his head away from the punches of Sabori. Into the body. Yeah, he's got some nice slips. Oh, again, that left hand, it, it's, it is consistent, and another one that shakes the sweat off the head. And a third. And Sabori's egging him on. He's saying, let's go, dude. And, and Avila and just again. firing back every single time. The left hand decimating somebody. Oh, and another one that catches him. He doesn't know how to defend it. 
and again, this time he falls with the right. Sabori needs to counter here. He's just gonna let Avila just attack, attack, attack. He needs to counter. Every left hand but a couple is connected. That one missed in the takedown by Sabori. Beautiful, beautiful takedown. Nicely done by Sabori. And at the very least, this puts Sabori in a position where he doesn't have to take any more of those left-handed punches. That was a big takedown, and, and it can help you gain some confidence, and he needs to, to be a nightmare in there once he gets that takedown. Ten seconds left here. Sabori is a tough dude. Wiping the blood from his face. Nice high kick from Pablo Sabori. And now he has a minute to try to recover from those heavy, heavy shots that he was getting. It's a great round for Sabori. Well, he looks hurt. I mean, but he's still got plenty of wind left. I mean, he doesn't look tired. It's just the fatigue of getting hit over and over again. Oh, you're going to have to kill him if you want him to stop coming at you. This guy's a nightmare to deal with, especially once he starts to gain that confidence. And this would be, feely there. be a gigantic win for Pablo Sabori. If he, would, if he can win, it would be the biggest win in his career. Marcelo Rojo, he says, give the hands, then the feet. Go back and forth. Not hearing a lot about how to protect that left hand, which I would imagine is paramount here. Here comes the highlights. All day, all night. Yes. Everything's working for Avila there, he, but the fact that he's going to a third round, he expected a 15 round fight, a 15 minute fight. Asking he knows at any minute it could be over. And we saw that earlier in the evening yeah. in the case of Hector Fajardo. Nice respect displayed by both fighters. And Pablo Sabori and Chris, or Anthony Avila take the center of the jaula. Oh, big, huge uppercut. A couple good power punches by Sabori and then response with a high low with the leg kicks. Oh, that time a right hand shakes Sabori. And Sabori's just willing to bite down on his mouthpiece, stay in the pocket, and trade, and he fires back every time. And he's finding a home for those head kicks. I mean, sure they're is. being blocked, but they're still wobbling Avila. Active start to round three for Sabori as the blood drips out of his nose from all those left-handed punches prior to this third round. That lead leg is where Sabori wants to target. Left hand. Nice slip by Pablo Sabori. Way to see that. And Sabori punting for yardage, the sweat and the blood. Oh. And now the left hand starts to find its target once again. Pablo Sabori with the inside leg kick. Shakes his head. This, it's taking its toll on Avila as well, who's taking a lot of damage downstairs. Pablo Sabori still has a ton of speed in his hands. He needs to let those hands go. Just the risk of getting, I don't think he minds getting hit, but those are just in the judge's eyes, shifting it to the benefit of Avila, who now switches stances. And Avila just looks like he's, uh, you know, resting almost in a sense. He's not really doing too much. He's, he's a very calm fighter. Playing the outside, you know, throwing something here and there, but not really trying to run away with the fight at all. And Pablo Sabori just keeps on coming. And Sabori's face looking like hamburger now with all, it's taking a beating, but there he is, giving no quarter, taking no quarter, taking no prisoners. He's got the speed on his side. He just needs to let it go. He's flicking those head kicks up like it's nothing, and that's very tiring. Reaches. Misses, very aware that Avila wants to take down, does a good job defending, beautiful, and takes the center of the jaula, and he's stalking him. Big kick from Sabori. He needs more of that, but now you're seeing the, the battle scars on the face of the shark. And Sabori switching stances from orthodox to southpaw and back to orthodox again. I haven't seen a lot of that left hand here in the third round, something that's worked repeatedly for Avila throughout this fight. He may have done enough as we're heading towards two minutes remaining. One, two for Sabori. Yep, he, he found a home for that, that left hand landed for Avila. He's looking to improve to 2-0 oh in Combate Americas. 
Beautiful head kick, flicked it right up there, Pablo Savori. Ooh, and a switch head kick again. I tend to think Sabodi is taking this third round, but he may have lost the first two, and that's the problem, and he needs to go for the big haymakers. Sabodi finding a second oh. win with that left head kick again. On well, that lead leg taking a beating again. Switches, it, it must be bothering because he switched there. Yep. But can he let that left hand fly? Not yet. Sabodi with the blood in his eyes still coming though. Great fight. Beautiful fight. Nice big low leg kick for Pablo Sabori and oh, uppercut. Close quarters. Oh, oh Sabori's turning the tide. And that's what he needs to do. He has to he has to empty the chamber here with a minute and change to go. Winning this round probably won't be enough. I love the way he flicks that head kick up there. It's effortless. It's beautiful. It's no thought. Trying to unload some knees, something we haven't seen a lot. And he is a taller party, so he's finding a home for that high left kick every single time. Avila has to be hurting here as he tries to keep those legs out of harm's way. Pablo Savori looking to unload. Just for that one power strike that could turn everything here. Has to keep going. He is aggressive as anything, and he's unloading now. And Avila in trouble. Sabori. Pablo Lefts Savori right. stalking him. Big knee to the bread basket. Pablo Savori wants to make a statement here. He's got 20 seconds left to go. Third and final round. And he's teeing Here he off. goes. In his corner right there. Avila. But is there enough time? Avila gives up his back. Savori looking for a takedown. He's got 10 seconds. Big, huge knees. I mean, uh, holding on for the result, holding on for dear life. And he's done it. Big final kick into the back. What a fight. Beautiful fight. The question is, did Sabori take round one or two? I don't think so. What about you, Juliana? I think he took two and three. Yeah? I, I, yeah. Wow. This is going to be a big time decision. It could be. What a, what a warrior. I think he did enough to win. Oh. He was constantly stalking. He was constantly being the aggressor. He wasn't content to just dance around the ring and, and find the, the time to recover. He was constantly pressuring, 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 always going high and low, high and low. And then the flurry of punches there. Beautiful job by Paolo Savori. He took everything that Avila had and he ate it for a Scooby snack and kept coming back for more. You're an old soul, Pena. That's why I love you. He wanted some. He wanted some dessert. He wanted some. He wanted idea. some dessert. He wanted seconds. And he wanted everything. And those Scooby snacks are delicious. I'm told. All right. What an amazing fitness from Sabori. Jeez, the yeah. frustration there is. Did he? Did he leave it a little late? Sabori's a true professional. He always comes in on time. He always fights the who's who. He always does. Goes above and beyond. I would say every single time. Now he's just got to hope. Hope he did enough in that second round to sway the judges. As you see, that, the nose taking a beating. Both fighters bloodied. And Avila, I, w I just want to say, he's got a left hook hand from hell. Beautiful job. He displayed great, great technique. All right. Comes down to the decision. The judges, their cards are in, and now we only await the word from Lupe Contreras. Me will it be Mexico? Will it be the United States? The highlights, that's when they're all clean faced, but that changed very quickly. I went up with the takedown, and then the left hand just dominated this fight for the better part of a round and a half. Round two, left hand continued. Then the low blow. End of the second round, Sabori turned it. Third round, pretty much one-way traffic for Pablo Sabori. Beautiful job by Pablo Sabori to finish into the flurry of punches. He said, get off me, Avila. Big, huge op uppercut. Big, huge overhand right. Pablo Sabori with the flurry again. 
not content to just let Chris Avila steal the fight away from him. He was constantly stalking, always pressuring, big, huge knee, big, huge elbow, nice head position, and both fighters respecting each other with a big hug there at the end. Oof. This is going to be a huge decision. You see these guys leave so much inside La Jaula. You, you don't want there to be a loser, but there's going to be one, and we are ready for the decision. The main event here in Fresno. Let's go in to Lupe Contreras. Damas y caballeros, después de completar tres vueltas, esta es la decisión oficial. Ladies and gentlemen, after going all three rounds, the official scorecard reads as follows. El juez McKnight anotó 28 a 28 un empate. Whoa, Judge McKnight tight. scores it 28-28, a draw. Overruled by judges Rosales and Lawley. Who scored about 29-28, superado por los jueces Rosales y Lolly, que entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. A favor del ganador, por decisión mayoritaria, in favor of the winner, by way of majority decision, from the USA, oh. the Sharks, Anthony! Pablo Sabori looking to exit. You feel for him. It was razor thin. 29-28, 28-28, according to one judge. We may have to do this one again. It was a great fight. Anthony Avila walking away with the win. He improves his record to 18 and five. He did enough to win in, in the judges' eyes. And, um, you know, Depends on what you're looking at and how you score the fight. I think he did a great job. Do I think he did enough to, to win? Sure. Um, but I definitely think that uh, Pablo Sabori also did enough and he was not going to be denied and, and he wasn't going to get the win as easily as I think he thought. Avila, you could see he almost apologized because he knew that he had to feel for Pablo Sabori the disappointment to lose so close. I know you thought Sabori might have taken it. I was uh, I was towing the line on that one. But Avila, he is a legend in the California fight game, West Coast champion for a long time. And then it paid off, but he made it very close to that third round. Clearly by the scores, you would imagine Sabori won that third round across the board. Definitely. All right, the main event, the co-main event could be a main event any other night. Zoila Frausto. Jamie Nivera coming up next. It feels amazing. This is my this is my home. You know, I was born and raised in Madeira, went to school in Fresno. Um, and to be fighting in front of my people is gonna be an amazing feeling. It's been a very long time, so it'll be great. Oh, it feels amazing. It'll be, it'll be here in Fresno. Not too far from my place. <laughs> I'm here for business and that's it. She's coming to fight. I mean, she signed. She signed on that contract. Anybody that's going to sign on that contract should be ready to fight me. I'm more focused. Um, I've been around a lot longer. I know a lot more. I hit harder. I'm more aggressive. Um, I have every, I have everything I need. She's just another fighter. Another buy I got to get through. Making her make a mistake, or if she makes a mistake, whichever happens first, that's how I'm going to win the fight. <laughs> Here we go, Zoila Frausto. She fell out of love with MMA. She's looking to fall back in love with it after taking a break to fight Muay Thai and kickboxing, which we, she was dominant in. She is one of the real legacy women's MMA practitioners. And now she comes back. We're ready for this one. Lupe Contreras inside La Jaula. All right. Juliana, look, we talk about Zoila Frausta. This is someone who won that Bellator 115-pound title. She won it in a tournament. She beat Jessica Penne, who I think most people know, Jessica Aguilar, and she beat Megumi Fuji. She was the first woman to beat Fuji. I mean, that's three big opponents. This was obviously back in the day in 2010. And she's now lifted it up her end to rock and roll. I'll get your thoughts on that now, Lupe Contreras, with the introductions. All right, so Jamie 
Queen Nee Nivena. Uh, she's all business, as you heard there. It's just another opponent she's ready to go through to get to the point where she wants to reach. Jamie Queen Nee Nivena coming out of Dragon House MMA from Union City, California, 34 years old. Purple belt and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. She said, it's my time to shine. She says, I give Zoila my respect. And it says, Juliana point out, it says it's her time to shine. Shine she will if she can get the victory against one of the big names in women's MMA, Zoila Frausto. So Queen Ni Nevada looking to do the, queen, the clean sweep of the Frausto sisters. Big pop for Frausto as she comes inside La Jaula, the warrior princess. Yes, she got that name from that old show, Xena. I'm sure Juliana Pena used to watch because she watches everything. From Fresno, she talked about being from here. First MMA fight was in Fresno. She went to school here in Fresno. She's a big deal all over the world in MMA, but certainly right here in Central California. Zoya Frost has been on the scene for a long time. I remember when she fought Misha Tate, actually, and uh, I reached out to her uh, before she, she had that fight. She is a veteran of the sport. She's been doing this for well over a decade. She hasn't fought in MMA inside the Howla for three years, however. So you gotta wonder, is that gonna be playing into um, her mindset is it going to be playing into the way that she can perform uh, she's here in front of her hometown crowd she hasn't done that in a long time and i know that she's excited to get back in there in an mma fight nivera sporting the flags of the united states and the philippines awaiting there is zoila frausto who said i went through a lot and i overcame a lot let's see if she can bounce back to set a marker for the rest of the year which could be a big one here in combate americas We're back up to lupe contreras Damas y caballeros, continuamos con mucha más acción. Esta es la atracción especial de esta noche. Pactada tres vueltas en la división peso mosca, ladies and gentlemen. We continue with much more action. This is tonight's special attraction set for three rounds in the flyweight division. The judges, los jueces, Marco Rosales, Ralph McKnight, and Mike Beltran. Introducing first, the fighter in the blue corner. She enters La Jala wearing black with blue and gold trim. Presentando a la esquina azul. Vestida de negro con vivos azules y dorados. Su peso oficial, 125 libras y media. Her official weight, 125 and one half pounds. In her 12th pro bout with a record of seven victories against four losses. En su décimo segundo combate a nivel profesional con un record de siete victorias y cuatro derrotas. De San Francisco, California. Jamie, Queen Nievera. In the red corner, in the esquina roja, vestida de negro, con vivos rojos y azules. She steps in wearing black with red and blue trim, her official weight, an identical 125 and one half pounds. Su peso oficial, un peso idéntico de 125 libras y media. In her 19th pro bout, with 13 victories against five losses in su décimo noveno combate, con 13 victorias y cinco de derrotas. Born, bred, and rep in Fresno, California. The Warrior Princess, Soyla Frausto. Our referee, Mark Lawley. All right, fighters, we've gone over the rules in the back. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. Touch gloves and let's have a good, clean fight. Stoic to the end. Two seasoned fighters going head to head here. It is equal on the height. Just about there, Rachel and Nivera does have the slight edge there. We are in the flyweight division. This is a great matchup. Jamie Queenie Navera took a loss to Antonia Shevchenko on that Dana White's contender series, but she's a tough broad. You don't want to be a stand-up fighter here, Nivera. You want to get this on the ground, knowing 
the boxing and kickboxing prowess of Frausto. Beautiful job of Zoila Frausto splitting the legs, making it difficult for Queen Ni Nevera to get her uh, arms wrapped around her, her legs there, so she cannot complete that takedown. Just an incredible athlete is Zoila Frausto, was a Fresno City College soccer player, MMA, kickboxing. Zoila Frausto, she's got an underhook. Can't quite see. Oh, and an overhook. Both girls in a neutral position. Big elbow over the top for Frosto. Big, huge knee. Giant knees uh -oh. for Frosto. And here we separate. And this is where we're going to see Frosto do her best. She's got amazing precision striking. So much happening in women's MMA ranks here in Combate Americas. Campbell McLaren promises a big time, earth shattering announcement in the not too distant future. We did hear from Alberto. Uh, Del Rio, that sexy star Dulce Garcia is headed to Combate. And now Zoila Frausto, well recognized, looking to return to MMA with a big time victory against a very good opponent who beat her sister back in the day. Oh, the lead leg taken out, Nivera. Nivera coming back with her own strikes. I like it. Browns to those real quick hands. It's up to Nivera to just avoid them. The big overhand right does not find its target. Nicely done by Queen Nina Vera. Frausto smells blood. Coming in with elbows and fists. And they're making their mark. Oh, into the body. And it's over. Zoila Frausto with the precision striking. Beautifully done. She finds a first round finish for her Combate Americas debut, and guess who I heard she wants to fight? Oh, break, and now we can talk about it, but precise punching, and Nivera looked like she was some control, and then she didn't. Yeah, she was doing really good. I don't know what happened, um, but nice respect there shown down to, to Queenie Nivera. I think, I think Nivera's just disappointed with how it happened, as opposed to being hurt. I could be wrong, and I don't want to speculate. But I think just ran into a class striker. I think she's back in love with MMA. I definitely think so. She did a great job finishing the first round in front of her hometown, no less. Champion at 115. She was too small for 135. She struggled to make 115 and make weight time and time again. I think she's found a nice home here at 125 as Nivera does meet her. I think 125 is a perfect weight class for her. 35, she's too small. 115, she's too big. 125 is her perfect home, and uh, she has found a home here with Combate Americas. One of our biggest signed females on the roster, Zoe Lafrosto. She is a vet. She is a pioneer in women's mixed martial arts. Big, she, huge, straight right hand. Another, another. Something hurt earlier. Right down the clown Oh, big shots. Shots to the body. And the ref's seen enough. She was hurt. Yeah, or something was hurt prior to that, because you could see Froila just go for blood. Right. She, she smelled blood. She jumped on it. She pounced. Big, huge knee, big elbow. Elbows, fists, knees. Left, right. Knees. That, that last knee dropped her. Punched to the body. Here's a big, huge knee. Boom, done. That was the one. That was game, set, match. Zoila Frausto, and now we can project. And I'll talk, I'll ask Juliana Pena to finish her thought here shortly. But in the meantime, Frausto soaks in the moment in her town, Fresno. She went to Madera High School. She's from here. She went to school here. And she has fought here, and she's fought here again under the Combate Americas banner. 1-0 Combate, and looking for bigger fish to fry in 2019 as she shares a word with Campbell McLaren. But that was impressive. So impressive. She, she hasn't fought MMA in three years, and she came in and got a first-round finish. Again, like I said, one of our biggest signings for Combate Americas in the female division. Zoe Lafrosto is going to be a very, very tough fight for anyone. To Lupe. How about that smile? She's got a great smile and a nice, uh, nice pace there too. <laughs> Didn't get hit. There's her little sister behind her.
Cruz to 14 and 5 overall. Long career in so many different arts. <laughs> Damas y caballeros, el referee Mark Lawley detiene el combate con un tiempo oficial de un minuto 52 segundos del primer episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Lawley steps in and calls a halt to this contest with an official time of 1 minute 52 seconds of the opening stanza, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, declarando la ganadora por knockout técnico. From the 559 Fresno, California, Zoila, the Warrior Princess Frausto. You, you think maybe at 35, this is, she's heading off to the sunset, but what I saw, Juliana, this is a fighter with a lot still to give. Sharp, precise, and still full of a lot of fight. Zoila Frosto is a pioneer in women's MMA. She's been around for a long time. She, we have not been able to see her in the Jaula, but she finally graced her presence back with us with Combate here at 125, and she is gonna be a tough, tough fight. And what do you hear? Well, I'm gonna get to that. We're gonna still talk a little Zoila Frausto here in a moment. We have one more fight for your viewing pleasure. From Fresno, it's Daniel D. Rod Rodriguez, Ivan Choco Castillo. Uh, la verdad es un orgullo representar a mi país, México. Uh, es algo, es una oportunidad que estaba buscando desde hace mucho tiempo. Entonces se me presentó la oportunidad y se me hizo. My strengths uh, to win this fight would definitely be my striking. I feel like I'm the more technical fighter. I think I'm the better overall fighter. My opponent, I see he's, I don't know, he seems a little bit aggressive in a, in a way, you know, but it's nothing that I'm not used to. I'm used to, you know, people looking at me funny all the time, you know. I could do nothing but just smile at it, you know. Se ve muy bien, la verdad. Se ve muy completo. Creo que pues sí portó bastante ayer, no sé, ayer se miraba en el pesaje. Y hoy lo miré muy bien, muy repuesto. It's always a pleasure to come and fight for Combate America, no matter where it's at, whether it's in my hometown or someone else's hometown. I'm always excited to come and put on the show. Choco! He is looking to get off to a 1-0 start, Combate Americas, but this is a guy who's fought 28 times, and there is certainly a connection. Alex Velasco, who beat Javier Reyes in Mexicali, and D-Rod looking to exact some revenge. Always adds to the drama when there's bad blood. His two daughters, we're going to make them proud as he comes from Ensenada. And it was when we were down in Mexicali, it was such a great thrill to see the rivalry between the, the border towns, the Baja California cities, Tijuana, Ensenada, Rosarito, and our hosts in Mexicali. And, uh, you know, I, I got into the ears of some of our superiors ago. If we could have a Baja California card, count me in, because that was magical. And we'll see if that's something that comes to fruition. Back to Lupe Contreras. Su rival, his opponent. Daniel Rodriguez. All right, this is going to be at the super lightweight division. Uh, Rodriguez, who uh, fought normally at 170, is coming down, and this might be the weight he's been looking for in a division that Combate Americas looks to build. Yep, they invented, not invented, but they have perfected that super lightweight division. They did it for the first time back in Long Beach, and D-Rod is a straight gangster. 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Purple Belt, 7-1. and one. This is his sixth fight with Combate Americas. And uh, he's coming there. You can see Andre Feely, who just picked up a w his UFC win in Phoenix, is in his corner. And that's got to give you some confidence. That's right. You mentioned 10th Planet, also under the tutelage of Eddie Bravo. One of the best here. And if you can go five and one in Combate Americas, good things will come your way. Maybe a fighter we're gonna see in some big time fights in the not too distant future. But first things first, he's got to beat Choco Castillo as we go back to Lupe Contreras. 
México versus the USA, este duelo. Tres vueltas en la división peso super ligero. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with much more action this bout. Set for three rounds in the super lightweight division. Los jueces, the judges. Marco Rosales, Ralph McKnight, and Mark Lawley. Introducing first, the fighter in the blue corner. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de negro con el tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. He is wearing black with the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. His official weight, 166 pounds. Su peso oficial, 166 libras. En 28 combates profesionales, mantiene un record de 17 victorias y 11 derrotas in 28 pro bouts. He has a record of 17 victories and 11 losses. De Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico, Iván Choco Castillo. In the red corner, in the esquina roja, wearing the colors of the USA, red, white, and blue. Vestido del tricolor americano, rojo, azul, y blanco. His official weight, 165 and one half pounds. Su peso oficial, 165 libras y media. En su noveno combate dentro de la jaula, con siete victorias y solo una derrota. He enters la jaula for the ninth time as a pro, with a record of seven victories against one lone defeat. Fighting out of Alhambra, California, D-Rod, Daniel Rodriguez. Our referee, Mike Beltran. All right, don't get over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch comes now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on now. Handle your business. Let's go. All right, as we go to the tail of the tape, these are some big dudes, big dudes with attitudes. Six foot one inch Daniel Rodriguez does have a two inch height advantage and a three inch reach. Again, fighting at super lightweight. And a little, he's from Alhambra, so a little shout out to all the guys and girls down at Cal State LA in Alhambra, California, getting uh, their education in a fine establishment. Hope you're enjoying us on the zone. And I remember we were in Mexicali, and the one thing, you have these American fighters that want to fight these fighters from Ensenada, Baja California. They don't know anything about them, but we don't know a lot. But what we don't know, what we do know is that they're really good down there. You want to know why they want to fight them down there? Because they think that they're easy fights. And it, it's not. They, they're looking to pad their record. And then they get knocked out by a Mexican there. What the heck it happened? We've seen it over and over. And now Castillo, right now, D-Rod's sh not showing any fear of fighting. The kids from Baja California. Dear Rod, zero fear. This guy's a gangster. He is. Heavy hands. Castillo with the overhand looping left. Hits Pardon me, him. right. And here comes D Rod. He wants to finish this round one. Beautiful slip by Yvonne. Nicely done. D Rod, who fought uh, Alex Velasco down in uh, Tijuana. And Velasco and Castillo. Steel looking to defend his uh, Baja California fighting mate, and D-Rod just relentless. D-Rod with a nice spinning wheel kick grazes the back of Ivan. And Joe Schilling in the corner of uh, D-Rod. Cal State Athletic Commission uh, signing off of the 165-pound division here for Combate Americas is the lead leg taken away. Big, huge right hand for Yvonne. D-Rod fought at 155. He said he felt weak there, 170. Certainly this seems just right. Yep, Joe Schilling helped him get down to 155. He said, hey, dude, you gotta start taking this stuff serious. You're actually pretty good. Got him down to 155, where he felt weak, and 165 is his permanent home as he finds a home again for that right. Or, just excuse me, left, because he's standing in the southpaw position. He's throwing those big punches, but hasn't got a clean look yet. And give credit to Castillo's defense. We're two minutes in. Heavy-handed is D-Rod. He is punching in those flurries, and they are landing. And, and you can tell that they're making Yvonne a little shy and intimidated, because anytime uh, D-Rod pounces, Yvonne starts uh, choking up. A knee causing more damage than that left hand, although that left, he just holds it like a spark plug, ready to make an impact. Goes straight in that time. Uh, you gotta like Castillo, because he's very evasive. And letting uh, 
Rodriguez just empty out that energy. I like what he's doing. You know, he needs to stick to his game plan, though, and, and quit waiting for D-Rod. He needs to implement his own game plan and be first on his attacks. Ooh, nice oh. stiff jab for D-Rod. That worked better than the left. Closes the, the range. Again, peppering away at Choco Castillo. Oh, Ooh, that, that was one, big. That one stung. He does not want to engage. Again with that big head kick. It's a taller party, D. Rodney flicks up that head kick like it's nothing. Ooh, again. Just enough to get through. Castillo's misses. Yeah, he says he's got he's got a head kick too. Good boxing skills. He's right there at the end of D. Rod's punches on everything, and that threw his equilibrium off. He's off balance. Uh oh, this could be promise for Castillo. He is the lamb to the slaughter here. Yeah. Holding on to that right hand, holding on for dear life. He's got to move. He's got to move. You do not want a big guy like D. Rod on top of you here. Can he? How's his ground game? It's he's reluctant to use it, but I'm sure it's pretty good. Oh, he's just bearing all of the weight of D Rod. Now Castillo in a lot of trouble. Got the mount. D Rod is punching and forcing Castillo to give up his back. Does have a, that purple belt in jujitsu, so he's he's comfortable in these situations. Ooh, head and arm triangle choke. A triangle. Looking to finish. Going across that arm. Giving up his back is Castillo. D-Rod trying to pound him away. Castillo finds a way to just fend off the heavy stuff. Oh, those are all finding their target. Those punches have a thud. It would appear Castillo's going to survive round one. To his feet. Nice one-two for Castillo. Nice left hook for Castillo. All right. It ends with another big head kick there by D Rod as they will go to their corners. You gotta get out of the way. You gotta move. You gotta punch. You gotta be on your own timing. You gotta implement your own game plan. You can't just be a sitting duck at the end of this guy's punches because he's the taller party and he wants you to get knocked out. You gotta move. Get out of the way. Do your own thing. Don't be on this guy's timing. Okay, Joe Schilling giving him. He doesn't seem too pleased with how D Rod went about his business. He goes, You got to clean it up a little bit. As Castillo survived, Castillo very good defensively. There's blood coming down from the forehead. You can see right above the brow. You can tell Castillo is tired because D Rod is so big, he's making him bear his entire weight. And that's a big guy to, to have to bear his weight. And, and D Rod doing a great job of, of implementing his own game plan. We have uh, our bios of these fighters. This one line just. It was very interesting with regards to Daniel Rodriguez. He goes, learned in jail how to fight and survive. I didn't want to say anything of why I thought he was a gangster, but it's, it's because yeah. of that. Well, hey, jail time will sober you up real quick. Yeah. I don't know from experience. I'm just speaking on other people's experience. I know from experience. I used to write somebody in jail for seven years. Oh, that's lovely. Leon. I was just a spin pal, but I mean, you, you got to have homies in there. Yeah. Maybe gets, that's something we should all do. Reach out to somebody in jail. They'd love to hear the letters or emails. I don't know if they do emails now or... On to another note, D-Rod says, get off me. Yeah. Great athlete. Great athlete. And especially when you got guys like Joe Schilling and uh, Andre Feely in your corner, you're confident. Oh, yeah. Joe Schilling in kickboxing is royalty. Royalty. Big, huge oh. knee. Oh. He, uh, and he's wobbling. Castillo walked right into that. Oh, that just caught the glove of Castillo. D-Rod with the big one, too. He's looking for a clean shot, but that left hand has not gotten through. Not yet. Castillo's like a sitting duck. Like, he's his back is up against the jaula. He's just, get out of there. Reset yourself. He's not having the time to reset himself because he keeps being content with just being on the outside of D-Rod's punches. Yeah, the punches, he, he's defended well. It's the kicks that have caused damage. I think D-Rod maybe a little frustrated with 
the fact that the punches have not provided the breakthrough and he has to go to the kicks. Big huge overhand for Castillo, barely misses. Let's see it again. See, he does the best when he's on offense, not defense. Castillo just hard target to hit. Double underhooks. Well, he did have a double underhooks, or maybe he didn't, and I just missed that. Big left elbow. And Castillo looks none the worse for it. Oh, yeah. Now some fist. Big flurry of punches for D-Rod. Castillo needs to, to get him off of him. And he did it with that teep kick. That was great. Good, sharp, straight left. Eat. Again, Castillo closes up. He absorbs, bends, but does not break. Super lightweight, it is Daniel D. Rod Rodriguez in blue. We're in round number two. Nice high kick for D. Rod. One point uh, considered basketball as a career. Done. And that is a beautiful left punch. Done. Finally, it works. He said, and, and at some point, I'm going to break through. And there it is. Let's go. D-Rod with a savage knee right to the dome. Beautifully done. Nice Muay Thai type stance. Oh, it's a Van Halen. To sweeten the pot. A little of uh, Castillo's blood on his hand, and he just waited and waited, and he knew that that was the money maker, and eventually it would pay off, and it did. You know what I loved is how patient he was. So patient. He he wasn't uh, overly aggressive. He knew that he was going to eventually find something. He just needed to wait for the opening, and he waited. Yeah. Uh, to your point, I was wondering because that that left hand's not getting through. So does he go to Plan B? He started kicking some more. He goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for this, and the door's gonna be left ajar, and it was. You can't lose when you have Joe Schilling and Andre Feely in your corner. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of know-how. You got a lot of the bases covered there. Let's look at that punch again. Bang. Straight left, big, oh. huge knee, and it's over. Say goodnight, Grace. No more. The hand-knee combination My stick. strikes again. Uppercut, knee. Oof. How effortless, he just picked up his kneecap and it was done. I would hope I never get an introduction to Daniel Rodriguez's knee. He just uppercuts and... It was wide open. Dink, right on the chin, dude. Chin, mouth. Perfect. Look at D-Rod, all business. It's like, hey, Campbell! What's up? Give me a little sugar! Let's go! <laughs> Joe Schilling. <laughs> A lot of tough dudes right now, from Joe Schilling to Daniel Rodriguez to Mike Beltran to Lupe Contreras. But nobody more impressive than Daniel D-Rod uh, Rodriguez. 100%. Lupe Contreras with the officials. Damas y caballeros, este combate concluye con un tiempo oficial de 2 minutos 31 segundos del segundo capítulo. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end with an official time of 2 minutes 31 seconds of the second stanza. Your winner, by way of knockout, el vencedor por knockout, D-Rod, Daniel All right, Daniel Rodriguez is your winner, KO, in round number two. And that brings to an end Combate Fresno here in February. Chance for a photo opportunity. And the folks at Fresno are very happy. They saw a lot of their own fine success, including Zoila Frausto, with her first round KO. And Daniel D. Rod Rodriguez from Southern California able to do it. And this, uh, again, a one of those moments where you exceed expectations on a fight. And we have set the table for some big fights down the road. And I know Juliana Pena 
So the Frausto, Amanda, Sor Amanda Serrano's on the, t the plate. We don't want to speak out of turn, but we certainly could see it. Maybe an Avila Sabori rematch. I wouldn't be against that. But we see these fights and these divisions start to develop, and we start to see the cream rising to the top, and we look forward to bigger and better fights in the months ahead. The cream shall rise. I always use that line, and you always go <laughs> Macho Man, don't you? <laughs> macho Man, Randy Savage. <laughs> Stamp your passports. We're heading to Mexico in two weeks, Guadalajara. Until then, on behalf of our entire crew, Fabian.